Sup guys, I'm Kel, Red Zone Rogue, and welcome to another Force of Will strategy video. Keep in mind that these strategy videos are not deck techs, but instead are strategy videos with the intent of inspiring you guys to go out and make your own dank builds. Also keep in mind that this deck is a pretty casual one, but it's a ton of fun. It is a Wanderer build, as you're gonna, it's gonna be pretty obvious going on. Um, this playmat is kind of in theme, nudge nudge, of what we're doing here. You probably, you know, read the... Read the description, <laughs> seen the thumbnail, it's probably obvious. We are doing Wanderer Vampires, good old ally of the Black Moon, Mikage Seijiro. This is kind of like a Daughters of the Mikage Vampire Tribal deck. This is actually one of my favorite decks. I've had this deck for a long time, probably like five or six months. Um, I've been kind of adding to it, tweaking it. And it's one of my favorite, like, go-to casual decks. Anytime I try to teach a new player how to play or, you know, Basically, that's what it is. Anytime I try to teach a new player how to play or just play super casually with friends, I pull out this deck and I hand them my Wanderer Elves deck. And um, these are both pretty fun decks to play. And without further ado, let's just get in with it because I'm starting to ramble. And um, yeah, as you can see here, I have this deck all sleeved up. I don't have a sideboard for this because it's just a very casual deck. There are some things you can do for sideboard, including like Black Moon Beeb and all that kind of stuff if you want to go like super competitive. But, you know, this is kind of like a, a casual LGS tabletop style deck and I still think it's a ton of fun and it doesn't suck. It does really well against pretty tuned decks, so let's go. So obviously the ruler is Ally of the Black Moon slash the uh oh jeez you can barely see this man. The Uber is so bad on screen, especially if you're using like decent lighting. This is the Eternal Vampire Mikage Seijiro. And let's go over what he does really quick. It's actually pretty simple. He's a ruler wanderer, which is pretty interesting. Um, has like lore implications, but as a ruler, doesn't really have that big of a deal. He has a judgment of two darkness and one of any. He has an energize of one darkness, as you can see down here. He has an activated ability of a darkness. He deals 100 damage to target resonator, and you put a blood counter on this card, and that's actually very relevant. Um, the blood counters do, you know, stack up over the course of a game, and you can kill off some pretty small rulers. You can earn no, rulers. You can kill some pretty small resonators and some tokens. And uh, on the other side, we have just a ton of abilities. Other than just being um, just straight up pimp, he is a 900-900. He is a vampire, as you can see here. We're gonna. Read the text really quickly so you don't have to take too much time looking at this shiny, awful mess. It says, remove a blood count from this card, choose one. Target Resonator gains plus 100, plus 100, or no, minus 100, minus 100 until end of turn. So the first one, he gives a dude minus 100, minus 100. That's pretty good. Um, or this card gains plus 200, plus 0 until end of turn. Or you gain 200 life. Or put a plus 100, plus 100 counter on a vampire Resonator. I apologize if the glare was too much there, but it's pretty good. He kills dudes, he gains you life, he pumps himself, he pumps other vampires. That plus 100, plus 100 counter is kind of a theme in this deck. All of the, the daughters of the Makage kind of use this um, counter, like plus, plus 100, plus 100 counter theme. So, yeah, well, let's uh, start talking about... Well, actually, let's go over the, the stone deck first, because it's a pretty simple stone, stone deck. So, for the stone deck, we will find that this is a mono black deck. Once again, pretty simple deck, and it's something that I like to use for, you know, players who are just starting the game. And, it's, once again, it's just a lot of fun. Simplicity can be fun. So, uh, this is Gru's Ballesta, or Gru Ballesta. I don't know if you're going to pronounce the S on it. I always say Gru Ballesta, because Grus Ballesta sounds weird. Anyway, it's the Ceiling Stone. It's a special magic stone slash true magic stone, which means you can only have one of them on the field. And if you ever have more than one, you have to destroy one of them. Kind of like the legend rule in Magic the Gathering. This one, you can rest it to produce a darkness. You can um, pay a darkness and rest it to give a J Resonator min uh, plus zero minus 200. I don't know why it doesn't say minus zero minus 200. It's weird that it's a plus uh, zero. But... Anyway, it's a pretty good stone. It just kind of acts like a darkness magic stone, and it can randomly kill dudes. Yeah, just a just a good stone. The next one we have is one that I run in every single one of my monocolor decks, and most of my wanderer decks in general. It's Little Red, the Pure Stone. Uh, as it comes into play, you get to choose a attribute. Obviously, we're choosing darkness. You can rest it to produce a will of that attribute. You can also rest it to give a resonator of that attribute plus 200, plus 200 until end of turn, and it is also a true magic stone, meaning that if you ever have two, you have to destroy one of them. So we are only running a single group of stone and a single little red the pure stone, and then all other eight stones are this dank darkness magic stone. Let's get a good look at that. It's a pr pretty good stone, and once again, gives me a good chance to actually use my uh, my Vingolf stones. 
And um, it also, small case, but it also protects against uh, Split Heaven and Earth in Wanderer because that card deals you damage based on the number of special stones you have. And we're only running two. So that does come up every now and then. Burn's a pretty popular archetype, at least in my area. All right, so let's start talking about some vampires. First up, we have Shara, third daughter of the Makage. We are going in opposite order because reasons. I think we're just going by their uh, their converted will cost or their will cost. Anyway, this is a 500-500 for one darkness. Those are really good stats. Obviously, she's a vampire. Every resonator in this deck is a vampire. Uh, this card cannot attack as long there as there are no plus 100 plus 100 counters on it So I mean that's kind of got this caveat here, but we're gonna be putting some counters on her She has this activated ability of two darkness and one of any and she can deal 200 damage to target resonator And then she gets a, a plus 100 plus 100 counter except if your J ruler is Makage you get two So yeah, she pumps herself up. This is just a really good one drop this followed by some other cards in the deck Really, really powerful aggro strategy, especially coupled with all of the removal in the deck. Um, also, just kind of on theme here, this is, uh, you know, the purpose of this deck is to have a lot of fun, and I think this deck is fun. And also, if you don't know, Shara is really cool looking, so that also helps for sure. Next up, we have Rinka, second daughter of the Makage. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck. I love this card. Um, Rinka is totally cool. She's a 600 600 for two darkness. So she gets a plus 100 plus 100 counter anytime she deals damage. She has precision as long as there is a plus 100 plus 100 counter on her. And you can remove a plus 100 plus 100 counter to give her a flying until end of turn. And obviously, I run a full playset of her. We're basically going to be running four of almost every card in the deck with a couple exceptions. Um, this is just another fantastic two-dot two vampire. She's very powerful on her own. She pumps herself. She gives herself evasion. Precision can pick off some annoying resonators. Yep, yeah, good, good stuff with, uh, with Rinka. Next we have Yashahime, first daughter of Mikage. She's a 700-800 for two darkness and one of any. Probably one of the higher costing cards in the deck. We do have a four drop after this, but, um, we'll get to that much later. Obviously, she is a vampire, and she's one of the key components of the deck, I would say. She has a really cool ability, and when she enters the field, you move all 100-100 counters from all other J resonators to this card. So that includes your opponents, that includes yours, um, but that's really important. Keep that in mind for some future cards that we're going to go over. Um, and she has an ability where you can remove a plus 100, plus 100 counter from her for one darkness. And you get to put two counters on another vampire you control. So she kind of like redistributes your uh, counters and she also steals counters from your opponent. And we're going to be giving some counters to our opponent. So that's that's kind of a big deal. So next up I run a full playset of Servant of the Makage. Obviously, got four of them right here. Um, really good card actually. He's a 300-300 for one darkness vampire. When he enters the field, you get to put a plus 100, plus 100 counter on a resonator. Uh, if uh, your opponent controls a special magic stone, you get to put two plus 100, plus 100 counters on a resonator. So you can follow your you know, first turn Shara, second turn, put two counters on her. Pretty good stuff. You have a, a 700, 700 attacking on turn two. That's not too bad. Uh, you can start some aggro beats with this. And also you can put plus 100, plus 100 counters on your opponent's stuff, which is relevant for the next card. This is Yashimaru. Uh, he is a 300 300 for one darkness, obviously, vampire. When he enters your field, destroy target resonator your opponent controls with one or more plus 100 plus 100 counters on them. And so, yeah, we can um, play the Butler Man, good old servant of the Makage, and then play this dude and blow up one of your opponent's guys. Pretty good. Um, blows up Gwyber, pretty relevant in Wanderer. Blows up whatever big stuff they have. And he's only a one drop. He synergizes with so much other things. Uh, we have another card that just randomly gives your opponent um, plus 100, plus 100 counters. Actually, it's not random. You will see. But yeah, fantastic card. Just a one drop removal in this deck. And finally, for the Resonators, I run three of Carmilla, Queen of the Vampires. This is probably the card you want to cut uh, before anything else. It doesn't really synergize as much, but Carmilla, come on. She's an awesome card, and come, come on. Come on, guys. Um, one of, probably one of my favorite cards when I first started playing Force of Will. Um, anyway, she is a 800-800 for two darkness and two of any. Obviously, vampire. She has an enter effect that is really, really good. Um, destroy target non-vampire resonator. And if your ruler is Alucard, the Dark Noble, or Dracula, then you get to put it into play if it was a human or something. We don't care about that because we are not playing with Dracula, which is also a badass ruler. 
But um, basically, when you play her, you get a blow up a dude. That's pretty sweet. 800, 800. Blow up a dude when it comes into play. Pretty good. Um, I wish she had flying. She has these giant fucking wings. Why don't you have flying, Carmilla? In any case, she's still pretty good. Four is a little much for this deck, but I still like it a lot. If you want to make this deck even more competitive, you could probably cut her for something else, but I do like Carmilla. Next up, we have Alvarez, the Demon Castle. And this uh, doesn't really synergize with demons. It is a vampire tribal card. It is an addition, Field Castle, which is not super relevant. Um, for one darkness and one of any, two drop. It gives all your vampires plus 200, plus 200. That's pretty cool, but it also has a pretty good banish effect. You can pay a darkness and banish it and put a vampire from your graveyard into your hand. So it, it buffs your team and it also gets you a dude back. So yeah, this is a pretty good card. Next, I have one of the more janky cards in the deck, but I really love it. it it's, it's a lot of fun. So this is Death at Midnight. First of all, it's got that Yashihime flavor. I mean, you gotta, you gotta get all the vampire stuff in here as you can, but it is a chant with quick cast for a darkness and one of any. Uh, your opponent banishes a resonator, put a plus 100, plus 100 counter on each J resonator your opponent controls. So they have to sacrifice a dude, or banish a dude, and then all their guys get 100, 100 counters, which you can then use to steal with Yashihime. It's kind of the combo here. Or you could use uh, Yashimaru to blow them up. So, um, yeah, it's actually kind of a pretty cool double-edged sword card. I like it a lot. I'm only running three because it's kind of a double-edged sword. But in any case, I think it's pretty cool. And if it is a turbo deck, by the way, and they just banish one of their little jabronis, all their dudes get plus 100, plus 100. But then you can steal them all next turn, which is really sweet. I have had some pretty big Yashihimes. Anyway, let's move on to the next card. The next card I run is Power Absorption. This is awesome. Kind of like the opposite of the last card, but not really. It's a quick cast chant for two darkness. It says, uh, this card deals 600 damage to target J Resonator, so it hits J Rulers, which is sweet, plus an additional 100 for each vampire you control. And we have a lot of vampires, specifically Vampire Resonator. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't count Mikage if he's on his, um, you know, J Ruler side. However, you also put a plus 100, plus 100 counter on each vampire you control, so it buffs uh, Shara, I mean, it buffs all of them, but it's just fantastic synergy. Like I said, a lot of cards in this deck evolve around this plus 100, plus 100 counter synergy, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's actually not as janky as it sounds. It's still kind of janky, but it, it works. It, it works, and it's it's a blast. I, also, this card's awesome. Look at, look at this. What other decks are running cards with the, this badass art? It's pretty sweet. Next up, I run a simple Two of Al Hamat's Black Lightning. This one's probably kind of weird. Um, but it works for the decks that I play against right now, and it, you know, if they were different, then you definitely want to swap this out. Maybe with, like, Black Moonbeam, maybe with some Regalia. It's up to you, um, but I do like this because I run against a lot of, um, counter-based decks or can cancel-based decks, and this card cannot be canceled. For two darkness, you have a chant, Ancient Magic, that doesn't really matter in this case. It cannot be canceled. You get to destroy a non-darkness resonator. Um, if it was awakened, you put it into your hand as it resolves. Uh, basically, I just use it as a uh, stoning to death that cannot be canceled. You can swap it out for stoning to death. You can swap it out for basically any number of things, whatever suits your need. But uh, this is what I'm running right now. You could run like, I don't know, Death Scythe. You can run a plethora of things. But I still think this is a decent option depending on your meta. And finally, I run a four of one of my favorite darkness chants in the entire game, the Nameless Mist. Um, for a single darkness, you get to look at your opponent's hand, choose a non-resonator, they discard that card, and then you get to put a plus 100, plus 100 counter on a resonator you control. That is so sweet. A lot of people forget about this 100, 100 counter bit, and um, it is super relevant to this deck. Pumping up your Shara so she can attack, pumping up Rinka so she can has precision, like, very, very cool stuff. And like I said, all the cards, well, most of the cards, Synergize with this plus 100 plus 100 counter synergy. I just sent synergize twice in the same sentence, but I don't care. I think this card is fantastic and it is even better in this deck. So there you guys have it. That is my Ally of the Black Moon or Daughters of the Makage deck. I hope you enjoyed the video. This one's kind of more of a, like I said, a little casual deck. Um, these are some of my favorite decks. You see a lot of like super tuned decks going around, like pulling lists off the internet. But I love it when people bring these to like locals or at the kitchen table, they just bust out their old janky brew. This is probably one of the more straightforward ones, but it is still a ton of fun. And you get to use a lot of cards that you don't really see play anywhere else, like 
like good old Shara here. And some of these cards have like awesome art. Shara, this, this butler dude's pretty cool. Um, Carmilla's a, a throwback classic, even this janky shit. And this is probably one of my favorite ones in the whole deck. Um, I love how well this deck synergizes. In any case, I hope you guys liked the video. Leave a comment, like, or subscribe. And stay tuned for some more forcible content. We have the next set, Time Spinning Witch, coming up soon. I'm definitely going to be doing some deck strategy videos, depending on what rules I can pull. Got my fingers crossed for Scheherazade and um, the, the Not Lumia. So stay tuned for that, guys, and I will see you next time. And it keeps focusing on Carmilla's face. You're drawing too well. You're drawing too well. It's like anime face. It's kind of a real face. We're going to focus on this one. Okay, but the video is done now, for sure. Now it is.